I'm like a proud dad here with all my garlic. Unbelievable. Oh, yes. I feel like I'm floating on a cloud of garlicky heaven. Mm. I'm going to show you how to never buy garlic again. Now, I've only been growing food for the last three years, but growing garlic, I feel, is a real hack to the system because it's so easy and you will never, ever have to buy garlic again once you've grown it once. Did you know that one single clove of garlic, when planted in the ground, will turn into a whole bulb of garlic? Now, considering there's almost or maybe even more than 10 cloves of garlic in each bulb, that is 10 times in the amount of garlic that you will have eventually. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I grow garlic and how you can grow it no matter what kind of garden setup you have. You can do it pretty much anywhere. Plus, I haven't had a cold in so long since I started using garlic medicinally and I'm gonna show you the simple concoction that I make using garlic that has boosted my immunity. Plus the most indulgent garlic recipe that you would have ever seen but this is not something that you wanna eat before a first date. First up, I have to say, do not get put off. You don't need a fancy greenhouse. You don't need a big garden to grow garlic. When I lived in London, just had a tiny balcony. I wish I knew I could have grew garlic then because all you need is a container, an old bucket, an old barrel. I've seen people grow garlic in bathtubs just outside in their garden. As long as you can get at least six to eight inches of soil within the container, you can grow garlic. I'm gonna officially launch the Grow Your Own Garlic movement. I want to encourage as many people as I can to grow their own garlic because it's so simple and I want you guys to tag me in photos and all that good stuff on social media once you've grown your garlic or in the process of growing it. Right, you need to plant your garlic in autumn time, really, just before, like six weeks before the first frost and that will allow the garlic to produce some good strong roots. To sow your garlic, if you're using a container, simply fill it up with compost. Or if you use a raised bed like me, spread a lovely rich layer of fertile compost across the top of your bed, about an inch thick. Then create some divots in the soil, two inches deep, spaced around six inches apart. Then place a single clove of garlic in each hole, making sure the tip is pointing up. Then all you need to do is cover over the garlic with some soil and water really well. The garlic does need to be located in a sunny area of your garden, so make sure wherever you're planting it gets a lot of sunlight. But apart from that, you just gotta let it do its thing. I will often mulch over, which just means adding a layer of dried grass or straw or wood chip over the top of the bed. This will deter weeds and also keep the moisture locked within the soil. So the garlic grows slowly but steadily all over winter and it will take about eight months in total before you're ready to harvest. Now we all know that garlic has super healing and medicinal properties and I just want to draw your attention to something that I've been using for over a year now actually and that's AG1. It's become part of my daily routine and so much so coupled with my whole foods plant-based diet I feel like I'm thriving and that is I'm so proud of that. So I've been recommended AG1 to friends and family and I want to recommend it to you guys, my lovely audience. Now AG1, if you didn't know, is a daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health through a science-driven formulation of micronutrients, phytonutrients and essential symbiotics. All very sciencey, I know. So to give you some real life feedback on how actually I think AG1 helps me, I actually feel less reliant on having coffees throughout the days, which is important for me because I, I need sustained energy and I feel like this gives me it. I'm filming, I'm cooking, I'm creating recipes, I'm at my laptop, I'm gardening, I'm in the gym. I work long days and I feel like this really helps me. Plus, a noticeable thing, and my fam my mum actually mentioned this to me, she thought my skin is looking better these days. It feels clearer and brighter too. AG1 is made up of 75 high quality ingredients carefully curated to nourish all the body's systems holistically. And surprisingly, it tastes delicious. So if you wanna get AG1 in your routine, then head to drinkag1.com forward slash Gaz Oakley and get started on your first purchase. 
and they're going to give you guys a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packs of AG1, which is so convenient when you're traveling. AG1, I just want to say a big thank you on behalf of the team and the audience for supporting us and sponsoring the video. It means we can continue making the videos and I really, really appreciate it. And thank you for making such a good product. So a few important tips when it comes to uh, sourcing your garlic to plant. Now, you can just go to the supermarket and I did this the first year ever growing garlic and I picked up some organic bulbs and planted them in the ground and they did grow and I, produced, I harvested a load of garlic on my first year but they weren't big, voluptuous, juicy bulbs of garlic and the reason for this is probably because they originated in a hot climate different to my one so they just weren't used to the cold that I get here in Wales in the winter. So what I did the next year is just go to my local garden centre and picked up a local variety of garlic. Now there's two main types of garlic that you will find at your garden centre. There's one called hard neck and there's one called soft neck. Both are just traditional garlic that you would know and love when you go to the supermarket more or less. However, hard neck actually produces a second use of garlic for me anyway it produces this flower stalk called a skate and these are the most delicious things to cook up so just before it's time to harvest your garlic you'll be able to cut off these scapes and just saute them they taste absolutely delicious but the other variety of garlic soft neck doesn't produce that scape but does produce garlic bulbs that last slightly longer so this year's garlic that I harvested actually was the soft neck variety. So I didn't get the scapes, unfortunately, but I still produce some lovely garlic, almost 80 bulbs. So the leaves have started to go a little yellow, which means we've got to harvest these babies. Let's have a look to see if we've got some decent sized bulbs of garlic. That looks pretty decent in size. Oh yes, we have a garlic bulb. So I'm now gonna harvest the rest of this garlic and we're gonna count how many bulbs I've managed to grow. Then we'll talk about the curing process and how we can make this garlic last for ages. That is one juicy clove right there bursting. What a delight. I'm gonna rate them out of 10 each time I, I pick them. That is a, that's a five, not the biggest one. Oh, look at that juicy one. Beautiful. 10, that's a 10. Beautiful bulb of garlic. We are nearly there. We've had some tiddlers, I must admit, some baby ones, yeah. but we've had overall a really decent harvest of garlic, which I'm very proud about. Look how small this bed is really. And we've got a ton of garlic, which should last me for at least a year. We'll see anyway. So the next job now is to lay this out on a table. I'm gonna first up count how much garlic I have. I'm hoping for around 80 to 100 bulbs. And then I'm gonna let it dry or cure basically. And I'm just grading them with size. That's the ones we want. And I've, this is the 54th one. Um, and not all of them are that size. After all, this is totally organic. We're not using anything to accelerate their sort of growth other than really good quality compost. The ones you buy from the supermarket are probably ginormous because they're artificially grown. 74, and guys, 75 bulbs of garlic grown. That is pretty impressive for such a small space and limited effort at all. All you have to do is put the seed in the ground and they'll grow. 75 bulbs of garlic, done. I'm like a proud dad here with all my garlic. Unbelievable. Now remember at the start of the video, I said that you will never have to buy garlic again. The garlic that I harvested will be the same garlic that I sow to grow garlic for the following year. So it's a cycle that just continues and I'll reserve some of the big juicy bulbs so that I constantly am choosing the best, most voluptuous garlic to continue to grow bigger and better year on year. What I did after harvesting was lay it out on a rack, just under cover in the shade, 
and it cures and it sort of hardens up and the skins get a little bit firmer and protect the garlic with inside it. And then I put my braiding skills to the test. And to be honest with you, my braiding skills were terrible, but I managed to group the garlic together nicely. And once you've done that, you can hang it in the house or wherever you like. And it does look really nice hanging there. It's like a countryside farmhouse French vibe for me anyway, or Italian. And there's definitely going to be no vampires knocking at your door when you've got all that garlic that you just harvested hanging around the house. Now for some beautiful recipes. Now, obviously garlic is an incredible kitchen companion, but also did you know that garlic has been famed for his medicinal powers for centuries and centuries and centuries. Now I'm going to use the small bowls of garlic that I have to make a superhero tonic that I will take daily. It's packed with fiery flavors that will boost your immune system. This is called fire cider. Every sip of this fire cider is an adventure. It can be used in marinades and dressings and sauces, as well as for its healing powers. All you need to do is chop up your fiery ingredients and get them into a big jar. I'm throwing in my onions, of course, a load of garlic, which I'm just gonna chop in half, my homegrown herbs, sage and rosemary. Plus we'll add some fiery chilies, some fresh turmeric, ginger, chunks of lemon, and then some beautiful spices. I'm adding some cinnamon sticks, some star anise and some cloves. Now that looks absolutely beautiful. One thing I just thought I could put in actually is a couple of flowers. My calendula and yarrow, super medicinal, super healing plants. Let's get a few flowers in there before getting the raw apple cider vinegar in. This now needs to sit at room temperature for around four weeks. And during that time, the vinegar will pull all of the medicinal healing benefits out of each ingredient. Well, I feel like a proud dad. My fire cider is ready to strain and use every day. Now this is my next batch. I've just run out, so I'm happy I've got this. And it just looks so beautiful now. I can see the homegrown garlic within there now. It looks absolutely beautiful. And that apple cider vinegar acts of a carrier. Basically, it extracts all of the goodness and medicinal properties in all of the ingredients. So all I'm going to do now is simply strain it and bottle it up. And I'll keep that in my fridge for weeks and weeks. Oh, that smells pungent. It smells delicious, actually. The stuff that I strain out actually will just go on my compost heap. There's no waste here on my kitchen garden. Everything goes to the compost heap. Oh, these look like little medicine bottles anyway, or whiskey bottles. Let's get this in. You think that you've got everything out, just press everything, squeeze all the liquid out, because that's where some goodness is locked for sure. Now, how do I take this fire cider? All I do, is get a tablespoon each morning, just fill it up and shot it down. At first it will be really harsh and you may not like it, but after a while you've come accustomed to it. It's so warming. I remember having fire cider after like ice baths. It's the best feeling in the world. And obviously the flavor is so intense. It's very savory. Obviously it's got that acidicness too. So it makes it the perfect salad dressing just with all the medicinal benefits that it has too. feel alive. It's like breathing fire. Woo! But that is delicious. You get the, the taste of the onion, the garlic, everything after. So warming. Wow, my chest feels alive. I'm going to get this in the fridge now. It will last for months and I'm already going to make my next batch for when this runs out because obviously you have to work ahead with fire cider because it takes a long time to make. Now this is the recipe you've all been waiting for. Clouds of light, fluffy caramelized bread, locked with inside it, garlic butter, lashings of it, absolutely mind blowing. 
So first up, get some really good quality, strong white bread flour. Then into it, I'm gonna add a really generous pinch of sea salt, some dried basil, and also some dried garlic granules to the mixture too. Now, the all important yeast. I'm using fast active dried yeast, but you can use fresh yeast in this recipe too. Give that a good mix up. Make a well in the middle, then get our liquids in. I'm adding some olive oil plus some water. Once you've formed the mix into a dough, then give it a really good knead. Then get it into a lightly oiled bowl and cover over with a damp cloth and let it rise for around an hour and a half. It needs a double in size. Let's make that garlicky butter. So what I'm gonna do is get some butter into a bowl and grate in a load of garlic, plus some fresh herbs from my garden. But any soft herbs that you have, basil, oregano, parsley, even things like sage and rosemary would work amazing in this. I'm just gonna grab a bunch and run it through this butter along with the garlic, plus a little salt too. So that is the garlic butter done, which is gonna be spread all of the dough that I'm about to roll out. But just to let you know, if you have any leftover of this, just wrap it up and it will solidify and you can use that on, you know, anything really. Roast potatoes. Oh, garlic butter is, is one of life's great pleasures, right? So what I'm doing is rolling it out into a rough rectangle shape and then I'm gonna just spread lash into that butter on top, roll it up and then cut it into some nice chunks. I'm then gonna get it into my greased roasting dish and roast it over a fire. So I'm not gonna bake this conventionally, but at home you would just put this into a hot oven around 180 degrees, but I'm actually gonna do it on an open fire. I can smell the garlic just wafting up. So what I'm gonna do now is get my lid on this, but if you're just using a conventional tin, just get a damp cloth over the top because we need to let these rise for about an hour and a half. Again, until they've doubled in size, really, that's how you're gonna get a really fluffy, light, beautiful roll here. So I'm gonna get my lid on, set it aside, and then I'll start my fire and get these cooking. Oh my word, it's almost trebled in size. Fluffy bundles of fun, garlicky fun. I'm gonna get this on the fire now and load coals on top of the pan and all around it and bake this until golden, crisp and delicious. Guys, it's time. It's been baking here now for about an hour. Let's see if this has managed to even cook it. I'm pretty nervous for this. Here it goes guys, fluffy garlic, hopefully caramelized, delectable garlic rolls. Oh, the smoke's in my eyes, but here we go. Oh yes, look at them. Oh my word, that is beautiful. Oh, the soft. I feel like I'm floating on a cloud of garlicky heaven. Mm. This is just pillows of garlicky fun. So much garlic and pillowy, fluffy, and going through my head right now is just, ah. Oh. Mm. If I turned into this, I'd be a happy man. Comment below if you love garlic as much as me. Mm. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned. I hope you get involved in the campaign of Grow Your Own Garlic with me. Um, all the written recipes are on my website, as well as signed copies of my cookbooks, and we can send them to you wherever you are in the world. Use Gaz 10 Plants Only Kitchen for 10% off everything in the store. I'm just picking out some of my best cloves to re -sow to grow even more garlic. I want to grow 200 bowls of garlic next year. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Please subscribe, please like it. And if you enjoy the video, share it to your friends. See you soon. She got thick, but she want to be thin again. Drinking apple cider vinegar. Wearing skim, because you want to be Kim and M. Grrr.